Kickstarter. Upcoming next week. Let's do this, right? Chris, lead your games. What is on the horizon for next week? The storm will finally be upon us. Mythic Battles, Ragnarok, and everything else that's coming along. Because there are actually a couple interesting things. And just like if you watched the video from yesterday, a couple of those indie projects, Rise of the Gnomes, I think sort of fly under the radar. And I like giving those exposure. So if I can do that on a weekly basis with the upcomings, but also the launched, there's always a few hidden gems. And that's sort of the fun of it. I see a lot more of this side of the industry now that I'm doing these weekly things that I never saw before, that I never took the time to see before. So I hope you enjoy it. Otherwise, you can always just skip to the big name stuff too. There's a couple big names that we still don't have dates for this month. Uh, Mortal Kombat, maybe the miniatures game, the follow-up from Jasko and Angry Joe sometime maybe in April, as well as the Hellboy one that I mentioned. Mantic was supposed to be in the first quarter. Well, it's early second quarter, so we'll see what comes of that. Otherwise, I don't really think there were many other big projects that did not launch in last month that got delayed. I think maybe the only other one I can think of is Buru, B-U-R-U, that one, that Euro-style mechanism game that was beautifully colored. Otherwise, um, we got a assorted lineup this week. I've sort of taken a glance, sort of not. I love doing this and flying by the seat of my pants because it's more fun that way sometimes. And I just, no script here, folks, no script. We go off script all the time. <laughs> for better and for worse okay so uh otherwise like i said in the end of the last video if you didn't catch that part and you're catching it this part um a few people have reached out to me i've reached out to a few people and taken some you know games that i might not actually you know be in my wheelhouse and i kind of want to see if i like them and i want to give you my honest thoughts on them i have a bunch of games i've received as well in the last month or so so i just want to be able to put out some sort of review what would you guys like in a short compact review? Because I don't have the capability right now to do sort of a gameplay and, you know, thoughts. So I think I'm going to do sort of a little brief overview followed by with pros, cons, sort of like the one-stop co-op shop does. I like that format. And then I like Board Game Co's sort of rating scale that I think I'm going to take a little bit of my own and, and mangle with it over time. But that's sort of the approach I think I'm going to take right now. And I'm not sure how well that's going to work because I know some of these games will probably be appealing to you guys. Some of them might not be. But I think also that's why I'm trying them is because I want to get firsthand experience to tell you more about them from my own personal standpoint. I mean, there's plenty of stuff out there that I go, ah, that's not for me. Ah, I don't like that. Well, I haven't tried it all either. So let's make sure one way or the other, I guess. So expect to see a couple of those hopefully. That depends more on, I mean, those videos are going to be, I think, relatively easier than these videos and probably require less time videoing and more time just playing games. And that's been the biggest limitation of all recently. So anyway, uh, that's not why you're here. Let's talk about what is coming up next week. Let's do this. So first up, I'm going to mention this because I saw ads for it and it's on my list. It's Clash, a miniature war game, ancient to post-World War I, definitely outside of my wheelhouse. And I'm going to mention it, like I said, just because I know it's being launched. But your game needs a little bit more than just Clash. Do you know how hard it is to find a game named just Clash? It's like looking for the game, the card game on Board Game Geek, right? If you're just typing in the game. I'll mention it just because I don't know how many of you war gamers are, there are out there watching this, but this is launching on the day before this actually aired. So if you're interested, you should probably go check it out because it should be live by this point and you can get more information there. But that's Clash. Next up is one of my favorite, even though I only have one of the game's small publishers, indie publishers, Cubico. And if you're not familiar with Cubico, these are handmade games out of England by a guy who does them all from a woodworking perspective who puts out one or two maybe be kickstarters a year and again does them just uh, straightforward in that sense and they're all unique they're not perfect by any means but they're all handmade and they're all fun i have one of the games that sort of is like a tabletop bocce ball version where you're flicking little cubes and trying to knock a bouncy ball uh you know closest to your cubes so it's it's a heck of a lot of fun it's one of my favorite dexterity games uh Karoo, i believe is the name but this is a reprint of one of the older games from 2012 called foundation 
2012 Expo winner of the Abstract Game of the Year. This is a game where it, you each have a color piece and you are placing these pieces down and you can see just by this picture you have various shapes that you're trying to fit in. And what you get points for is how many other pieces it's touching, irrespective of whose piece they are. Color doesn't matter. Additionally, there are dots on the corners and in the center that get you an additional point if you happen to be the one that places it over there. You can see the scoring is marked around the outside. And when you can't place any more, the game's over. For each piece you have left over, you lose points. That's it. If the price point was going to be less than 50 bucks, I'd probably be snatching it up in an instant. They will usually have somewhat of a limited number just because, like I said, Gavin, the guy who makes these, hand mix them so it's great and sometimes on his previous kickstarters he'll offer ones from previous sometimes you won't so you don't really know sometimes until you see the launch page so i'm going to be checking it out when it launches uh i wanted one or two of his last ones but just with the price point plus shipping you know it'd be like 70 75 bucks and i just couldn't justify it at that point but this one like all of his others in the past two or three years i check out when they launch if this has any interest to you I definitely think it's worth it. This is, you know, a small publisher. He gets, you know, anywhere between 10 and 20,000 euros usually uh, when these fund. So check it out. You might like it. Next up, launching on the 4th, is Scrumpy Card Cider. So what are you doing? Gain apples, gain wood. Make cider, make barrels. Exploit, XXX, make profit. That it's always sunny gag with... Dennis, anyway, and they specifically call this game a deck manipulation game, not just a deck builder. And it goes to point out some of the ways in which it is different from a deck building perspective on the page. Cards in the player's deck, they serve as resources by flipping them and sliding them under your storehouse. They also have a secondary action. So if you aren't happy with what you got, you use the card for its secondary action, which means you can make a card into apples and wood instead of having to use other cards. Or, as the owner, you can just do it yourself instead of playing a card. But it's less efficient, but it allows you to do an action you otherwise might not be able to do during a certain time. Here's an example of what it looks like. So you're playing three workers, choosing the cards to keep in and out of your discard, choosing the cards to keep from your hand, and drawing back up as part of the phase of the game. There are already several videos here on the page as you can see so if this interests you as a sort of twist on a deck builder deck manipulation type of game you can already see there's about four or five videos that are under five minutes that are probably worth checking out from the designer uh definitely check it out when it launches and see if it's something uh for you hopefully there is going to be more information there that you can take a look at about how the phases actually play or just check out one of these videos prior to that so there you go. That's Scrumpy Card Cider. Next up, launching on the 5th, is Hippocrates. Now, if you're not familiar with Hippocrates, Hippocrates was a philosopher, a Greek philosopher, around 400-ish BC. He is traditionally referred to as the father of medicine. I mean, it's where the whole term, the Hippocratic Oath, the one that doctors swear when they become doctors to do no harm, yeah, that's where this comes from. So, what are we talking about in terms of the game? So you are his disciples and you are leading his succession after he has passed away. You are trying to treat patients in the temple, which was originally known as the first hospital in history. You're trying to do so by gaining notoriety, by healing patients well, so that people all over the Mediterranean come to you for your services. There are five phases that they distinctly talk about in this game. I am not going to try and pronounce any of them in fear of totally screwing them up. But the first phase, you get three patients in the hospital. You select carefully because you need to choose which ones need your more urgent help and which ones may be easier to treat, but make sure that you take the ones most in need because otherwise your reputation's at harm. Second phase, you got to pay your doctor somehow. Third phase, you got to hire new doctors. You got to get more equipment. Fourth phase, now you got to treat people. You got to puzzle resource wise. You got to link stuff right doctor, right patient. And then fifth phase, count up what you did, score it, rinse and repeat. So you can see a little bit of what this looks like. And it is tile placement in terms of lining these up 
and how it's actually going to be done, I'm not quite sure. But there is a rule book here on Board Game Geek that you can take a look at, and you can see a little bit of what you're going to be getting yourself into. As a side note, when looking at these rule books online, a lot of people have these rule books that sort of split the picture in the middle of the fold, which in practicality, when you have the paper copy of the rule book in front of you, it works really well. On the PDFs, it makes it a little difficult sometimes. So you're going to be drafting your doctors. You're going to be taking them, selecting your patients, filling the queue of the ones that I mentioned, getting your supplies, and then going forth and kind of taking everything else you need. So what are you actually doing? Like I said, receive, pay, hire, treat, gain reputation, victory points. So it's just, is it going to be a sort of a combination of tile, worker placement, resource allocation, resource management? Is it going to be deep enough? Is it going to be balanced enough? This looks like an interesting take on things. And I like the medical side of things in general. Uh, I've not had a chance to read through this to see exactly some of the nuances of the phases. But it appears unique enough that if you like maybe a little bit of a heavier game with some of these choices and some of these allocation managements, this might be a flying under the radar type of game for you. So I would say you definitely want to check it out when it launches on the first. And if you want to read the rulebook already, like I said, this is a pre-copy of the rulebook on Board Game Geek already. So you should check it out. There's one video, I think, in French, maybe. We'll click over and see. So... Yep, French. And looks like there's another uh, one here too that you can see as a playthrough. That's in French as well. So, well, I might have to wait for English if you want to see that when it launches, but I'm sure that if they've already got French versions, they'll probably have English ones as well. So check it out. It's coming from Game Brew around the 5th. Speaking of the 5th, Ragnarok. I've covered it elsewhere. I've covered it excessively. I'm going to mention it again because it is the big player. It gets the big clicks. You guys like it. Um, what else do you need to know? Uh, they put out a couple more character previews. This is delayed from the end of March now to the 5th. And some of the newer stuff even looks more unique. There was just one released over the past couple days that talks about it basically getting stronger as it takes more damage. So another twist on that style of mechanic that we really haven't seen. So I'm pretty excited to see what other twists they have in store because it seems like one of my biggest concerns that they were not going to uh, have it necessarily be as different might be, in fact, not a worry at all at this point. And we know that some big names have it. Uh, King of Average has it. I'm pretty sure Board Game Co. has it. I'd be shocked if Quackalope doesn't. Uh, I'd be shocked if Dice Tower doesn't have something out there as well. So we'll see. I reached out to them on Twitter and they said, hey, DM me for following up for something in the future. And they haven't really gotten back to me yet. I can't DM them because they're not following me, so I can't contact them, so it's kind of a weird situation. I'm going to work on that. So I can get you guys more stuff in the future, hopefully. But anyway, I'm excited about it. <sighs> Way too much money this month. I don't even want to think about it right now. So um, <laughs> uh, definitely going to get the core. The core is probably going to be a really good value, just like the original Mythic Battles Pantheon was. And then it's just going to be a question of how much else. And I think there are rumors, and I think some of it has been confirmed, that there is going to be some content from the previous one available. They might even do sort of a survey to see what people want during the campaign to see how much they can get post-campaign so they can manage it in the Pledge Manager. I have no idea. This one is usually going to be seven figures. It's just how high. So I'm excited just to see. I expect good things. But I'm going to be critical too because the expectation in the bar has been set in good ways and bad. So we'll see what it shows. Definitely going to be throwing another video or two about this in the future. Next up on the 6th is Hidden Leaders. A bluffing, deduction, take that sort of uh, interactive game. I already am a big fan of this artwork. I really like this coloration scheme. I like the style already. So I'm definitely going to be checking this one out. And I don't even know what it's about yet. So let's take a look. So you have one of these leaders. You are one of these leaders. And you are allied with two of the colors. By secretly playing heroes on the tableau, you're going to influence the outcome. This reminds me just by in with the secretly playing or openly playing reminds me of Oriflamme, if you're familiar with that game. Great, highly underrated three to five player French game that won a couple awards a year or two ago that the expansion just came out for. And so I hate to say it, but this reminds me of that. And I really liked Oriflamme as just a quick meta party game. Not party game, but just take that tactical game. 
and they go through the various wind conditions here as you can see the four different colors that you're going to be managing so if red is in the lead red wins greens in the lead green wins if red and green are tied blue wins if red and green are in the war zone black wins so i like it already i like those mechanics a lot of people are not going to like this game because this is going to have some take that. This is going to take a little bit of nastiness. This is going to be a little bit more chaotic. It's not going to be easily controlled, but that is a type of game that I sort of like in these things because also the play time is relatively short in these situations. I think, let's check, 20 to 40 minutes. And so once you learn it, it's probably 20 to 30. The blow building, secret information, powers. I, I'm going to be all over this. The price point is going to be the make it or break it. I, I just like everything about it so far. Let's see what they've got on Board Game Geek already. Bunch of images like I've been showing you. A couple of videos already. Great 9-10 minute videos on how to play. Uh, a review from about 3 weeks ago, 2.5 weeks ago. No rules, but I'm going to be all over this. I really like what I'm seeing so far. And I will definitely be checking this out when it launches. I may even be backing this. This is one of those hidden gems that I was talking about earlier that unfortunately has wide mass appeal to me because of how easy and how uh, nice it is aesthetically, but easy to get to the table and easy to play, less overhead, but still repeated plays uh, reward just a good time. So hopefully it matches that because I'm excited now to check it out, but we'll see when it actually launches. Next up is Territory the Card Game, also launching on the 6th. That's an interesting picture. I like that. So what are you doing in Territory the Card Game? It's self-described as a high fantasy two to four player game where you are battling your champions in order to secure the most territories. Hence the name of the game. You have a deck, champions, relics, spells. You get points when you destroy the other person's stuff. First one to 18 wins. The problem is there's not a whole lot of other information out there. You can see a little bit here in this picture of what these cards look like. So there is a decent amount of text there. Looks like you can see a little bit of what these cards look like, a little bit of text. Uh, a little bit of, you know, health points, shields up in the corner, stars that are clearly doing something. Once per turn, if you cast a spell, draw a card. Once per turn, if your opponent champion deals damage to the city capital, that champion loses a hit point. Some more stats down here. Uh, but just no explanation of sort of what these do. And again, my biggest concern is that although this looks very stylish, how much is the overhead? How nuanced is it? And how different is it in terms of wanting to play in a very overcrowded market? Because... I worry about this game as it says a two to four player. Is it really a 1v1? Can you do 2v2 versus well? Or when you say four player, is it 1v1 v1 v1? I don't know. So it's definitely worth checking out, especially if you were a fan of some of the other unique ones that came out in the last couple weeks, something like Mage Noir. This might be a little bit cheaper price point. Uh, but what's unique about Mage Noir? What's unique about this? There's just not any information out about it. So you just kind of have to wait and see and see if it's something that interests you when it actually launches. So if it does, check it out when it launches on the 6th. One of my other favorite publishers, Level 99 Games, is launching their next campaign uh, following, I think, the recent delivery of, as you've seen previously, that I own Bullet as well as Millennium Blade Collusion. Uh, they are doing a follow-up mini expansion, it sounds like, to Imperial Spells and Steam. The railway building in this sort of steampunk-esque fantasy industrial world that is it's more of a pick up and move and more of a train game, you know, put together in that fantasy element, which we don't really see most of the fantasy elements you see in sort of the past. They have said that the deluxe version that was highly sought after and highly expensive post-campaign is going to be offered. The question, I think, is going to be what is the price point? Will it be the same as the last Kickstarter or is it going to be somewhere slightly below retail? you know, between those two prices that we've seen already. That's the question. And the, obviously with the Kickstarter thing, you know, you got to have something new. So it's a mini expansion. I thought it was going to be maybe a larger one. They already had a larger one that came out with the first core game. It's been relatively well received, but it's also sort of flown under the radar. Again, sort of like a lot of level 99 games. They are very unique. They are very different. They are very much their own thing, but they're also not widely appealing to a lot of people. And so I think their rank is unduly not reflective of how good some of these games actually are. So what are you doing? You're using, like I said, your Technomancers, which is a great name, by the way, Technomancer, Technomancer, Hyperspace Kraken. I didn't forget about that. You thought I forgot about that, didn't you? Anyway, and you're using mana to build these rails and your amount of mana crystals required to cast the spell varies by the, what terrain you're in and how the potency of the spell actually is in the first place. 
And you can see it's sort of a hex-based grid system that you're building over. So there's some variability in the setup itself when you're doing this. This actually reminds me very much of the setup for Cosmic Frog, coincidentally. Uh, level 99 games, the artwork is fantastic. The lore building is great. I am just not a big fan of train games. And this is one train game that I would be potentially perhaps interested in just because I like what they have done elsewhere. And this may be a little bit different take on it in that sense. Reaching new cities first in this game, this is sort of the blessing curse. This is where you're trying to decide. You're going to get more benefits by reaching these cities first, but it's going to cost you more resources because then other people can use your rails, I believe. And the changing markets may mean that what you got there first may not be what you need going forward. I think the biggest concern, obviously, again, with a game like this is something with the deluxe, I think, was going somewhere between like $150 and $175. And obviously, the deluxe is amazing. Uh, the component quality-wise is great. It is simple to play, but difficult in terms of the variety and the replayability and the way it can be played. So if you're looking for something like that, this is definitely worth a look. But I think as with uh, many of the Level 99 Kickstarters, the price point is often the contention because some have definitely been worth it. Bullet, for example, Millennium Blade Collusion, definitely. But others like Sakura Arms, I looked at and I said, there's not a whole lot of reason to get that at retail versus Kickstarter. And so this one, especially if the price point is significantly lower than what they've been offering for it at retail recently, and you've been looking to pick this one up, this might need the time now. I guess the question just is, what is that mini expansion going to look like? And is it going to be necessary? How much of a good thing is it going to add? And what is the price point going to be? Is it going to be more exclusive? Is it going to give any bonuses? Are they going to have any stretch goals? Because they've kind of vacillated back and forth between the campaigns. Uh, they've kind of gotten away from it more recently after the first couple of Millennium Blades, which I think were bogged down in terms of production and delays because of them partially. So I think they've noticed that and sort of gone a little bit the other direction. So it'll be interesting to see what they do when this launches on the 6th. But again, I hate to say this, another game that I do not need on my radar that I really would love to play. So... There you go, Imperial, Spells, and Steam, the new expansion on the 6th. Now, launching on the 7th, we have Arena Colossi. It's a miniature-based game in ancient Rome. One to six players. This is a fighting game, skirmish, tactical, hex-based system. You can see here a little bit of what it's going to look like, and this one appears to be more of the melee setup uh, with the cheesy puffs. That is the clear distinction of how you know it's melee. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. Uh, so you can kind of see how it is set up in the first place as a hex style where you are choosing your card on the first phase and then the second phase is following through the actions. Here you can see a little bit of the render setup uh, with the four players as well again. And it previously tried to launch, it looks like. Uh, you can see here that it was November 13. I don't know, obviously didn't fund, or I don't know what else happened with it, but they're relaunching. The rules are actually on Board Game Geek now. And I'm not going to go into the rules because it's like a 20-page rulebook for a skirmish game. But they try to stay historically accurate, they say, and stay true to details as much as they can. Each character has a deck that appears to be somewhat symmetric when you're looking at it. And you are either the red, the blue, the yellow, or the green. Each person has their own character sheet. And you can see a little bit of the individual setup right here on the page with your own dashboard, miniature sheet, combat tiles, and movement cards. So you have different aspects that you're going to be controlling, and you can see how all of these sort of are things you're going to be keeping track of during the fight. And here is more, more the asymmetry comes in with some of these numbers over here that affect over here. So I'm not going to do it much more detail because it's probably going to go much deeper in the time that would be required. But move, playing your cards, declaring your engagement, doing the combat session, ending the round and then they break down the phases even further so i guess the question is what is the price point going to be because this is clearly a miniature based game is it going to be sustainable what is different this time than the last time when maybe it failed to fund those are the things that i think people want to see and what sets it apart from other skirmish games that are out there in the first place is this better than something else that's out there i mean because again speaking of saturated markets this is one where the competition is definitely heavier so you have to check it out when it launches on April 7. Speaking of things launching on April 7, explore it, the domain of Mirza Noctis, the next of the game found projects. Again, I've talked about this one on my video earlier in the week of the six Kickstarters or crowdfunders that you need to know. And I mentioned it because not only is it 
partially going to be a better test of GameFound to see how they're progressing. And I think it's going to be an interesting test, sort of like Kingdom Rush was, of where are more eyes going to be lost or gained because it's on GameFound? Because this is fourth in a series, and people I have had say, and I've seen it elsewhere, that they did not realize what Kingdom Rush was going on. And I've experienced it myself. I have to remind myself on a daily basis that Robinson Crusoe is going on because even though it's not a game that is of interest to me, I also just sort of falls out of my memory because it's not right smack dab in front of me when I go to Kickstarter two or three times a day. And there is something to be said of that. Just having more eyes gets more money, period. So like I mentioned, this is the fourth iteration of Hexplorit, and there is obviously some variation between the two, but it, again, like the point I raised on the video earlier this week is, how much of a game like this do you need? Even if they are slightly different, you know, everybody has a different threshold for these sorts of things, right? Aeon's End, Marvel Legendary, Root, all of those things, how much of a good thing do you need? Some people need it all, some people need a tasting of it, some people just need a dab here or there, and that's the question of what this is. This looks more like the Castlevania esque theme in the horror element. Now, I will say they have done a great job of branding differences between the versions so that you feel like you can jump in at any point. The price points have been relatively well. I'd say the last one, the Sands of Shurax, also was distinctly different, but none of these have been over like $300,000 either. So none of them are break the bank, you know, seven digit figure raisings either. So is the price point going to be good? Uh, I would assume so. I mean, part of the benefit, right, they say this uh, going on GameFound is that they're taking smaller of a cut, potentially. And will we see that on some of these pledges for the campaigns that are going on GameFound? I don't think we'll know until we get, you know, more time and more projects under our belt. Um, it's, a comp it's a cooperative hero building sandbox dungeon adventure exploring game. It's hex-based. One of their big things is just the variety and the sheer numbers of uh, abilities and m races that you can be. And they do it, you know, here I said, over 2 million combos, roles, races, aspects, traits. Is you're just creating something unique almost every time. But it is still a campaign game. It's still a session game. And you still have some of that going on. And again, as, as always raised in the comment section when I talk about these games, how many of those do you need? They go into, even on their own website, a little bit of the lore. So if you want to read more of the background, they've got it here. Well, let's see. Let's see what else they've got here. Uh, not a whole lot up, up yet. So we'll see what it does. I'm going to follow it, but I'll be honest. I've had trouble focusing on some of the GameFound projects. So I really want to see them launch more, so I have more reason to click over there on a daily basis to see what else is going on what else is new. So uh, we'll follow it. We'll see what happens. And, um, you know, hope it does well. It's done well in the past. I see no reason why it's necessarily going to be different this time. So it's going to be launching on the 7th. Check it out on GameFound. Launching on the 8th now is Space Plague. Had a brief uh, anxiety moment there, making sure I was actually recording. Uh, <laughs> not that that happens a lot. One to four player game of Conquest, where you are one of these four races, all wanting the same thing. You want to dominate the galaxy, period. You are racing to try and conquer planets. Hand management, die rolling, events, special abilities, all sorts of different features that are going to be going on in this game. Evolutions, as you can see. Here's an example of one of the planets you're trying to get a hold of. So what you're going to be trying to do is upgrade and customize to your own unique style because they say that everyone is going to start with the same starting hand of cards and how you choose to use those what evolutions what other abilities what you're buying from the market how you're choosing to move and spawn shield or even evolve your aliens is going to determine how you do comparatively to the rest of the players as you can see here we'll blow it up a little bit the planets all have their own unique defense system so, each time you're trying to conquer a planet, you have to adapt to what it is trying to do to fend you off. Clearly, there is some symbology that you're going to have to learn, and it says planet terrain placement as well, so that's going to play into things additionally. Now, they mentioned some of these events that may be happening may be random, they may be different every single time, and so you're going to have to potentially deal with some of the chaos that may come with that. And so if you don't like that chaos or that unpredictability, you're having to change your plans based off of a random event that you have no control over... 
you might want to take a second look at this one because this one also might not be for you then. But if you like that sort of aspect, if you like sowing chaos and dealing with chaos and making other people change on the fly or having to change on the fly to best adapt and beat your compatriots out in that manner, then you might want to try this because this looks like an interesting combination of things. Oh, and did I mention that one of the races that you can be is the Flat Earthers? Can't make this stuff up. So you can play as the Flat Earthers. That just lends itself to a whole bunch of jokes. I'm not going to go there. Low-hanging fruit, right? But that is launching on the 8th. So I'm going to come back a few days and talk to you about Cyber Odyssey Breach into the Unknown because this is also supposed to be launching on the 6th, but there is no Board Game Geek entry, and so that's why I've done this a little bit out of order. This is by Red Joker Games, and the designer of Time of Legends, or just legends now is it I, I forget how they had to rename it the joan of arc one that had to get renamed that second one and it is a cooperative game about unraveling a murder in this new eden tech savvy futuristic type city cyberpunk if you will you're traveling through the five districts trying to search for clues in order to unravel these series of murders that has everyone doubting their safety these clues are going to help you solve investigation cards advancing towards identifying eventually the murderer in the first place. So what else can you do, though? You can take part in illegal street races, purchase new stylish equipment, visit bars, build networks, recuperate from damage <laughs> inflicted uh, by just resisting the world order that's out there that's trying to control every facet of lives through the technology in the first place. There are five separate game boards that they talk about, as well as offering intricate or intimate encounters rather than just one big board. Two characters meet, you can fight or you can deal. How you want to solve things, fighting, interacting, dealing, wheeling, negotiation, is up to you. And it appears that we're going to be seeing some miniatures as well. But that's all of the information that's really out there. We don't really know anything else. I have no clue what this is going to look like. And I'll be interested to see what sort of reception it gets because this is another big unknown, right? That could easily fly high or get close to the sun and get burned and Icarus. So we'll see when it launches on the 6th. It's going up against some tough competition. But if it's got it, people will like it. You know, last but not least, let's throw in one more because this is sort of a tweener date and I'll cover it now. So maybe I can cover it a little more later as well. Koi Garden, which is launching on April 9th. Two to four player tile laying card game, as you can see here. You're using different types of wildlife to get different scores as you move throughout the tiles. The description says, as you move throughout your pond, you build and tend to this wildlife and it will change the way you score. So you can see a little bit more of the close up here of what you're going to be actually getting into and how these things are different. So for this koi, move one way infinitely through the same scoring tile and then score one point for each tile you swim through or the turtle. Move one way, whatever way you want, score one point for each way you, you swim through. And there's going to be obstacles that you're going to be building up that are going to get in your way as well. So you just need to be aware of what that's going to look like. There are a few videos out there, preview videos, and so you can take a look at what it's going to actually look like. I'd be interested again to see sort of this because it's beautiful to look at. But what is the price point going to be? If the price point's going to be plus dollars, maybe on second hand I don't need it. But if it's reasonably priced and these are standees, and the gameplay is there because you've got these other elements down here with sort of the other creatures, like I mentioned, the snail or the frog that change things up. Maybe that is enough to intrigue me because this one might be more abstracty than not. So I'm interested to see what the actual gameplay looks like when it comes down to it. But like I said, I probably won't have a chance to cover it in next week's upcoming video. So I thought I'd throw it here in the tail end. That is Koi Garden on the 9th of April. Okay, that's it. That is what's upcoming next week. Too many that are already way too interesting to me with too many stuff that's already interesting to me. Past that, as well as that I'm trying to decide on currently. <sighs> okay, it's, it's a bad month for the wall. We all know that. It's all coming. It's just going to get worse every single week. There's going to be new stuff that pops up. There's going to be surprising things that always catch my eye, and I do not like that. I like it at the same time. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll have something out. Maybe a small review one of my first of many in terms of trying uh, formats, uh, maybe this coming week. Uh, I will not probably be a Monday morning quarterback hotness because I don't think things have changed up enough in the week that it'll have been. 
but I'm also might try and put out that other video I've been trying to slowly edit through of the try before you buy sort of list of Kickstarters. Uh, I think that would be an interesting one. Or maybe I'll just try and have another one or two uh, should you back videos out because I know those are uh, well received and I like doing those just as much. So that's what I got on my radar. And that's where my head's at. As always, have a great weekend. Stay safe. Stay classy. Let me know in the comments what you think, what you're backing, what you're looking forward to. Again, any of these catch your eye? Anything else I'm missing? Let's talk. Okay. See you around.